um, simple and efficient so you don't have to go scrambling for a bunch of stuff. So just know that when I'm when I'm building things, that's kind of just the way that I that I like to go. But to start, we're going to start just with a little bit of standing, move our hips, and then we'll get down into our squat. So we're just going to take some nice, generous cir circles of the hips, just kind of tuning in, noticing how your body's feeling tonight. Notice how your hips feel, notice how your back feels so that you can make adjustments according, according to how your body feels. Now take those big hip circles and just go the other way. <laughs> or if you're Sam, maybe just keep going in the same direction. <laughs> All right, and then once you feel like you've you got a sense of how your hips are feeling and everything, just take a second to come to a little stillness, put one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. Close your eyes down or soften your gaze and just take a nice gentle breath in. Feel your feet connected to the ground. Take another gentle breath in and just get a sense of the walls around you, the ceiling above you. And then maybe offer up just a little bit of gratitude for the safe space that you have to work in. And then before we get into our first position, just take a moment here to set an intention to honor your mind and your body throughout your practice. Never doing anything in your practice that would cause your body pain and treating yourself with love, care, and respect. With that intention set, we're gonna take it right down into our spot. So how wide you position your feet, that's based on your proportions, turned in, or turned out. So some, some of us might feel good to have our toes and our knees pointing forward. Some of us are gonna feel better to have the toes and knees pointing slightly outward. So you'll know when you get there. And then some of us, it's gonna feel good to have the heels elevated. And for some of us, it's gonna feel good to have support underneath the butt. So if you know what you like for your squat, you're just gonna come down, get into it, and then make some little readjustments. So if you get there and you're like, oh, that's not for my energy today, you're just gonna sit on your butt with the knees up nice and high up towards the shoulders and you'll just hold on to your knees or your shins. But if it feels good to have the butt elevated, get settled into the shape that feels the most appropriate for you. <clears throat> and then once you're there, you're gonna choose your own adventure once you're there. So if you're in that squatty position, you could choose to round. You could just let your hands hang out in front of you and round to the back of the body. Or if you wanna get a little deeper into the hips, you might choose to go a little prayer hands and let the elbows kind of push gently into the inner thighs. Once you've got the form that's feeling good to you, just invite some soft quietness and soften your jaw. Take a minute to just kind of settle into your breath. Always options to make adjustments within a pose. So if you get somewhere and you're like, oh, I don't wanna stay here for three or four minutes, make your adjustments so that you feel comfortable and happy in that position. Keeping your body soft, keeping your eyes soft and closed down or just focus your gaze. But as we're in this pose, I'm just gonna talk through a couple of things that are happening in our practice tonight. So this, this particular position and then a couple others are aimed at our digestive system. But if you've had a big dinner already or if you have food in your stomach, then some things you'll want to make some minor adjustments for. This is a perfectly safe thing to do with your with a little food in your belly. So just know that here you're perfectly safe. But when we do go down belly down with the blanket underneath the belly, you might choose to lighten up the compression on the belly if you've got food in your in, in your digestive system that you're working through. We've got about a minute left here. So if you've gotten to this point and you think it might feel better to make any adjustments, do what you feel like is best for your energy tonight.
We've got about 30 seconds left. Knowing that from this position, we're gonna take it into a dangle. But like I said, if you have food in your digestive system, it might feel better to take a forward fold from a seated position. So if you know you've already eaten and dangling won't feel good because sometimes it'll just bring all those digestive juices up into the esophagus and it just feels bleh. So if you already ate dinner, I would say opt right away to sit down on your butt. But if you have not eaten dinner and you have an empty stomach, a dangle might feel good. All right, we've got one more breath here. And then when you're ready, we're gonna move right into the next posture. So from this position, if you're in that squat and you wanna go for a dangle, you're just gonna gently lift your butt up, readjust your feet so you have that nice, soft, folded, heavy position. Once you're here, if you get into this posture and you're like, no, I think I wanna sit down onto the ground, take it into a seated position. We've got three minutes of a hold. So you wanna make sure that it feels really good and comfortable. The focus here, if you're in that standing position and you're taking that dangle from your standing position, we do wanna see if we can just let the spine get nice and heavy. So think about crown of the head heavy towards the ground, bending your knees just as much as you need to so you don't have to effort too much against that folded position. In the seated fold, you don't get as much of gravity working for you. So just know that in the seated position, you're gonna stretch the backs of the legs, you're gonna stretch the back, but you won't get that gravity help. We're halfway through our hold in this position. So just check in and make sure things are still feeling good. You're breathing comfortably. Take one more breath here. From here, we're gonna come down into a tabletop position. If you're in a seated position, just swing your legs around, but slowly and mindfully bring yourself down into that tabletop position or bring yourself up into that tabletop position. And then once you've got your tabletop, just to soothe the spine, we're gonna bring it a little cat and cow in. So drop your belly, lift your chest, lift your tail, round your back, and just make this some nice fluid movement. We just wanna, Invite that fluidity back into the spine, soothe anything out you may have come across in that dangle or that fold. And then once you feel like you've soothed the spine out, things feel pretty good, we're gonna take it right into a zigzag seat. So one leg in front, one leg out to the side, swing your legs around, get yourself seated so that everything feels good, but we're gonna take it into a twist. So the leg that's in front, we're gonna rotate towards that leg. Arms might be a little bit more upright. So especially again, if you have a full belly, you might choose to stay a little bit more upright with a light twist. But if things feel good and you're feeling happy to 
fold forward just a little bit more. You're gonna twist and then fold down just as much as feels good. And then once you get there, let everything settle in. Soften the sides of your body. Tune in and notice the movement of breath. Keeping everything as soft as you can, start by just tuning in and noticing the shoulders and the upper body. So holding this twisted position, are you putting a lot of effort into it or can you soften your shoulders a little bit, soften the back of your neck? And then tune in and notice your legs. Are you holding or did you pick up any tension in your feet or around your inner thighs? Sometimes we grip in those muscles to just kind of help support that zigzag seat, but see where can you let go? We're halfway through our hold on this side. So just check and make sure everything is feeling good. Adjustments as needed. And then once you're in, once you've made it through the adjustments, invite that sense of softness back in. Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly bring yourself up and out of that twist. As you return to center, take a breath and just notice that sudden freedom of breath that you find in your center. And then just for a little counter stretch, reach out and away from that side. Just add a little side bend, open up and make some space through the side of your body. <clears throat> and then once you feel like you've kind of worked all of that out, lift up, swing your legs out and around. So you set your zigzag seat up to the other side. Take your time. There's no rush. And I should have said this, but just so you know, you could also take your folded up or rolled up towel and use it as a little prop to bring the floor up to meet you if that feels like a nice in-between space for your twist. Once you've got your legs deranged, rotate, and then you choose how far you decide to go into that fold. So the twist is there already. You don't even have to fold into it if you don't want to, but if it feels good to do so, you'll sink forward and then just find that depth of, of a twist that feels appropriate to you tonight. Once you've got your twist and your fold, whatever you're going for, check your legs, make sure they feel good and happy in that position and then find that soft settling in.
We're slightly over halfway through our hold on this side. So just check in and notice how's your body feeling? Have you picked up tension in your feet, in our thighs or shoulders? Can you let those spaces soften? Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly and mindfully come up and out. As you come back to center and unwind, take that nice big breath and just let that fresh wave of blood come back into your center. And then if it feels good, take a little counter stretch, just leaning out and creating a little space through the side of your body. <clears throat> nice. And then when you're ready, lift on up, swing your legs out in front of you and give everything a little wiggle. Bounce out your knees, wiggle out your ankles. Now we're going right into our lunges from here. So just know if you want to take your lunge on your backside in a half happy baby, flip yourself over onto your backside. But if you feel like you want to have an attempt at that lunge in the prone position, you're going to step your right foot forward. You're going to slide your left leg back just as far as feels good to you. And then here's where we're adding that little twist. So we're going to let the right knee drop out a little bit. You're going to come down onto your left elbow and forearm. So that's going to help support. Just make sure that your shoulder is braced. And then right hand is going to come to the knee so that you can sink that left hip even further down. So once you get into that position, that's where you want to find that soft settling in. If you get here and you're like, that is not for my energy tonight, take it on your back, take it into a half happy baby. But if this feels okay to be here, the knee is opened out. I'm on the blade edge of my foot and I'm sinking my left hip down nice and deep towards the ground. There is efforting in that left shoulder. So my left shoulder where my elbow and forearm are down on the ground, I'm keeping my left shoulder slightly braced. So it's not a completely relaxing position. Lunges never really are. <laughs> And you wanna be on like a level between five and seven of effort and, and sensation. If you're getting into the eights, nines and tens, you might wanna pull it back just a little bit. We're halfway through our hold on this side. So just check and make sure things are still feeling good. You feel supported in your shoulder. You're not dipping too far into the hips that you feel any pinching or pulling something that's creating pain. We never want to go to a level of pain in our yin yoga. We want to find sensation and we want to hit in a positive stress, but we don't want to cause ourselves pain.
Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly, slowly, slowly bring yourself up and out. Release back to a tabletop position. Take your time as you come to that tabletop position, or if you're down on your back, just pull both knees into your chest and give yourself a little rock side to side. When you come up to the tabletop position, just drop your hips a little side to side. We don't wanna move them too much. We don't wanna to get too warm in the hips. So we wanna stay pretty cold. So we get into that connective tissue, the ligaments and the joints. But once you feel like you've kind of just shaken off that dull ache, we're gonna take it right to the other side. So left foot's gonna step forward. Right leg is gonna move back to a position that feels appropriate. You can also use your towel to cushion your knee. So you always have options to use your props. We're gonna let the foot fall open a little bit. So we're gonna come onto the blade edge and the knee opens up. Right elbow and forearm come down to the ground, left hand to the knee. And we sink that right hip down just a little bit further. So find the depth of this lunge that feels the best to you. And then once you're there, just settle back into your breath. And keep in mind, one side might feel different than the other, and one side might be really appropriate to be in that deep lunge, and then one side, it might feel better to take it on your backside. So don't feel like you have to be symmetrical in the effort of work that you do. Make sure that it's an appropriate level of work for your body tonight. We're halfway through our hold on this side. So just check in and make sure everything's feeling good. You're still breathing comfortably. We should be breathing in effortless. So nice deep inhalation and even slower exhalation. Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly, slowly, slowly bring yourself back up to that tabletop position. Or if you're on your back side, pull both knees into your chest, rock yourself a little side to side or bop your hips a little bit side to side. Just going to soothe all that stuff out. <clears throat> and then from here, we're gonna come down onto our belly. We're gonna start without the towel under our belly. So just gently bring yourself down so that you're on your belly and then see how that feels, just that light bit of pressure on your belly. The first thing we're gonna do is nice. It's a nice little jiggle and a shake. It's really nice for the central nervous system. So you're gonna bring your hands just so, so that your hands are stacked, elbows are nice and wide. And you're gonna step your feet just slightly wide so that they're out kind of out towards the corners, corner ends of your mat. And we're gonna start by just kind of rocking our butt a little side to side. So what we wanna have happen is we wanna get this little sense of like letting go. So once you get your hips rocking, can you rest your forehead on your stacked hands? 
and just let your body rock side to side. It's really good for the central nervous system. It's a nice, gentle reset, but it should feel good and comfortable and soothing. So if you're getting here and you're rocking around and it doesn't feel soothing, slow it down or leave it off altogether. But if you can stand it, we're going to rock around here. I almost said it. I almost set the timer for an hour. No, we do not want to do this for an hour, although that might feel good. We just want to do it for one minute. So we're just going to let the butt rock. Let your whole body just kind of shake and move with the weight of your butt. Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly start to let that come to a stillness. Just let your whole body just come to a restful stillness. Take a nice deep breath in, slow breath out. And then ask yourself, how did your belly feel in that position? And if it felt good, we're gonna take our blanket <clears throat> and place it. I got it folded in half, folded in half. So it's a little bit of a mound, but it's really gonna cover the whole surface of my belly. So fold up your blanket, not too much, just so. So it puts a little bit of compression on the belly. And then this is the nice one where you don't have to do too much efforting. So we come back to that crocodile position, nice wide legs, stack your hands. And then once you've got that blanket or your folded up towel underneath your belly, rest your head on your hands and let everything else come to stillness. Relax your glutes. We wanna let our butt muscles be as soft as they can be. Relax the backs of your thighs. It should feel a bit of a gentle compression on the belly. We want gentle compression, something that stimulates the digestive system, but not that it's creating so much pressure that you can't breathe comfortably. So check your breath right away.
Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, slowly start to prop yourself up. We're just gonna roll gently onto one side so that you can move your towel or blanket out from underneath you. And then you'll ask yourself, does it, do you think a Sphinx position would feel better supported? And if so, fold your towel in half again and just move it forward so it's gonna be propped up under the solar plexus. But if you feel like maybe not, you wanna do it a little bit with a little bit more of your own body holding the effort, you're gonna come into your Sphinx position. So elbows in line with the shoulders, hands in a parallel position, fingers spread nice and wide. Once you've got that position of the body, you're gonna ask yourself, did I sit in a chair all day and do I want to bring just a little bit more length through that front pocket area? And by doing that, you just pull the heels in to get that bent knee position. If you get there and you're like, oh, that's a little intense, that's a little more than I bargained for, then just float your feet back down. But if all feels good here, soften back into your breath. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears just a little bit. We do get compression in the spine. We're getting length through the whole front end of the body. So make sure everything feels good. Heels can get nice and heavy. And then just tune back in and notice your breath. A nice slow inhalation and an even slower exhalation. We're a little over halfway through our hold in this position. So just tune in and notice how things are feeling. Now you might choose to keep your heels heavy towards the butt and keep this bent knee position. But if for the last minute, if you want that extra effort and you wanna move it into a seal position, you'll gently float the toes down, press into the hands, lift up a little bit further into that bigger compression of the spine, but then just make sure that that feels like a good effort for you that you feel good about. Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, if you're up in that seal position, gently lower your elbows down, soften that arch of your back, and then just give everything a little shimmy shake. Wag out your tail, move some things around. Now we're gonna come into child's pose from here. If you want, take your towel with you. You have options here to support your child's pose. So some of us, it might feel really good to take that towel and tuck it up between the knee crease so it creates a little bit of space in the knee joint. We are gonna to try to attempt knees together, toes together, so that closer position of the child's pose. <clears throat> For some of us, it might feel better to cushion the ankle. So you might take your towel and tuck it up underneath your little ankles so that they feel supported. And then for some of us, it might feel good to just have a place where you can rest your forehead. That's what I'm gonna do. So you find a position with your prop that suits you best, knees together, toes together, fold yourself over. Find a nice, comfortable position with the body. And then once you've got your way there, let your hands just rest wherever feels the most comfortable. You might slide them back and let them touch the soles of your feet. You might prefer to keep them reaching forward, or you can always stack your hands and rest your forehead on your hands. So find a position that feels good. And then once you're there, just come back to noticing your breath.
for some of our bodies, this closer position with the legs, knees together, toes together, it does create a little bit more compression of the belly and the chest. If you've got a lot of belly and chest, like I do. So just know that it does create a compression. If it's so much that you can't breathe, make some space, move your knees apart. But if it feels okay to be with that compression for a little while, knowing that you're not gonna be here forever, allow yourself to notice it without it creating tension in your body. Soften your jaw. Breathe deeply into the back of the body. So notice the breath in the shoulder blades and in the rib cage. Take one more breath here. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, slowly and mindfully bring yourself up. We're gonna come into an upright seated, upright seated position and do a little breath work because, before we come down onto our backs. So if you don't wanna sit back on your heels, just find Sukhasana or any other seat that lets you sit up nice and tall and we want access to our nostrils. Now, if you've done alternate nostril breathing a lot and you've got that movement pattern down, awesome. You might go alternate nostrils, but for some of us, it might feel just a little bit more beneficial to just stick with one side. So just for a moment here, close your eyes and just notice the breathing in and out through your nose and notice if one side feels a little bit more congested than the other. There's no right or wrong, but if you notice that one side is breathing a little bit more freely, that's the side we're going to leave open and the side that's a little bit more congested, that's the side that we're going to close off. So take a second to notice which side seems to be a little bit more open and more closed. And you can totally go alternate nostril if that's in your practice, but if it feels better to be there, we're just gonna close off the more congested side and we're just gonna breathe for a minute. So all you gotta do is close off one side, close your eyes down or soften your gaze, and then just breathe in and out through that open side. Take one more breath in and out. And then once you've completed that last cycle of breath, release your hand from your nose so that you can breathe freely through both nostrils. Eyes closed down if that's available. Take a nice generous breath in. Nice slow breath out. 
Wonderful. And then when you're ready, open your eyes, grab your towel. We're going to set up our towel before we come down onto our backside. <clears throat> I have my towel folded in half and then folded in half again, and I'm going to roll it up into a little, a little burrito. So get it rolled up to the height that you like best. We're going to place our little rolled up towel perpendicular across the mat, and we're going to line ourselves up so that we can place our shoulder blades <clears throat> onto that roll of towel. So get it just so. Line up your shoulder blades, settle onto that roll. Arms are gonna open out nice and wide and feet are gonna extend nice and long. So we're taking it into our broken fish pose. So it's a supported fish and then you're, you are gonna let your feet kind of just flop out at the sides. So find that position, make sure that the roll feels good underneath your shoulder blades. It should feel like a gentle lift of the heart space. You wanna allow the shoulder heads to relax down and let the arms open out nice and wide. And then once you've got yourself in a position that feels good, just make sure that your head and your neck feel like they're comfortable and you can breathe in and out really comfortably here. Take one more breath here. And then start by bringing a little bit of movement and energy down into the legs. So move your legs, little, little windshield wiper action, swish them a little side to side, wiggle your fingers just a little bit, and then slowly start to prop yourself up. Push into your elbows, gently lift yourself up and off. We're gonna try to keep our roll if we can so that it's in a good shape. And then once you've got that move out from underneath you, lower back down onto your back for just a moment and just kind of notice the benefits of that back bend. So as you come out and now you come into that long straight spine position on the ground, just take a nice deep breath in, notice the opening in your heart space, the opening in your shoulders. Cool, and then from here, step your feet in so that we're gonna be able to lift the butt up and then you're gonna choose your own adventure here. So you're gonna take your roll of your towel, lift your butt up and slide that roll so that it's underneath your tailbone. It's underneath those broad hip bones. 
settle your hips on just for a moment and then take a second to check in. So it might feel really great to just stay in this supported bridge with the knees bent. It also might feel really great to extend the legs long and then arms are gonna reach up and overhead and that's gonna create a nice long length through the front of the body. So you might choose to go with this more extended position. You're getting a little bit more lengthening through those front hip pocket areas, or you might think a little bit more support, knees bent, feet on the ground. So choose which position feels the best to you tonight. And then once you've got your way there, come back to that softness and letting go. Your towel should support you. If it feels like it's a little bit wonky or a little bit higgledy-piggledy, make sure it's arranged just so that you can let the hips go. You can soften your abdomen. You can relax your shoulders and your arms. We've got about a minute left on our posture here. So if you opted for that bent knee position and you do want that little bit of length, you might choose at this point to extend the legs long and then lift the arms up and overhead. But if you were happy and totally settled into your position, keep everything as it is, and you choose the depth of work that you're going for here for this last minute. Take one more breath here. And then if you opted to extend the legs long, start by sliding the feet in. <clears throat> if you want just that little bit of a refresh for the lymphatic system before we come up and off our towel, with that towel underneath your hips, you're gonna lift your legs up like you're going for legs up the wall. And then once your legs are there, you're just gonna give them a little gentle shake. Just shake them as much as feels good. Make sure the towel feels good underneath you. You could always move the towel out too if it feels better to do that little bit of shaking without it. It does elevate the hips a little bit more. So it's just kind of a nice swooping sensation of bringing that lymph down and towards the heart. Nice, take one more good gentle shake of the legs. And then when you're ready, float your feet back down to the ground, press gently into your feet, lift your hips up, move your towel out from underneath your hips and then release your hips down and then just for a moment notice. Just by removing that towel, notice how your back feels. And then we're gonna move right into a little figure four to finish our practice and move some things around. So take your right leg across your left. We're gonna lift the left leg up and thread the hands through. You might choose to go hands-free, but if you can grab hold of the back of the thigh or the top of the shin, gently bring it in. And then we're gonna take our figure four, 
and draw it in some gentle circles. Circle in one direction, allow a little bit of freedom of movement here. So you don't gotta go perfect squeeze, pulling those legs into the chest, allow them to move a little bit. And then if it feels good to do so, take your figure four and draw some circles going the other way. <clears throat> nice, and then when you're ready, slowly and mindfully release, set your foot down, step off, release that figure four and set it right up to the other side. So left leg comes across the right, we lift the right leg up, thread your hands through, grab, hold wherever feels best. And then once you've got a nice loose handhold, start to take that figure four and draw it in circles. Circle in one direction. And then circle the other way. Beautiful, take one more circle around. And then from here, we're gonna release and move right into a supine twist. So you're gonna uncross your left leg, pull your right knee into your chest, let your left leg go nice and long. And now we're gonna take that right knee and just bring it across the body into that twisted position. Let your right arm open out nice and wide. We're not staying here for the full three minutes. We're just gonna take about three to five nice deep breaths. Awesome, when you're ready, pull the right knee into your chest, bring the left knee into meat, give yourself a nice little hug and squeeze, and then hold on to your left knee, let your right leg go nice and long, <clears throat> and then take that twist over to the other side. Left knee comes over to the right, left hand opens wide, head turns to the left if it feels good, and then just come back to your breath. About three to five nice deep breaths here. Take one more breath. And then when you're ready, pull that left knee into your chest, bring the right knee into me, give yourself one last light little squeeze here, and then set your feet down, take it into some light windshield wipers just to kind of move the hips a little bit, bring a little bit of soothing back into the hips and the low back, but then start to ask yourself. So my suggestion for Shavasana, if you have a wall available, it's my suggested Shavasana written down is a supported butterfly at the wall. But if, or even a legs up the wall would be really nice energetically speaking. But if you're just in the mood for a more traditional shape or you don't have a wall available, maybe take it into constructive rest or just find a shape that feels good to you. But if you have a wall available and you can swing it, you're gonna spin yourself around and then bring yourself into a butterfly position. So the blade edges of your feet are gonna be on your wall. I have conveniently this little ledge so I can even rest my heels on it if I wanted to. So find a nice position that feels like a good finish, a good Shavasana for you, and then allow yourself just a minute to settle into that shape. And then once you've got a shape that feels right to you, close your eyes down, allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm.
you always have the option to stay in your Shavasana just as long as you like. But if you feel ready to do so, start to gently reawaken your body, moving gently into your limbs, starting to find a little gentle movement. And especially if you're up against the wall, if you did your legs up the wall or if you did butterfly against the wall, take your time as you release down and then roll your way onto one side and slowly and mindfully find your way up to a comfortable seated position. And you can take your, your towel with you and sit on it if that feels like a nice way to go. So find a nice comfortable seat, whatever that means to you. And we just want a little access to our handhold of our heart space. So just sit up nice and tall. <clears throat> and then once you found your way there, we're going to just stack our hands on top of the heart so we can trap that skin and connective tissue. We're going to turn our head to the right and then tuck the chin slightly down. So we keep the skin and connective tissue trapped, turn your head to the right, tuck your chin down, take a nice deep breath in. Slow breath out. Lift your chin up, return your head through center and then turn it over the other way. So we're looking over to the left. Once you've got that head turned to the left, tuck your chin down, take a nice deep breath in. Slow breath out. Pick your chin back up, return your head to center. Keep your hands stacked on top of the heart. We're gonna keep that skin and connective tissue trapped and lift your chin up or towards the sky. And now you can just choose to stay with just that lifted chin position or do 10 little kisses up towards the ceiling. So you're gonna just push your lips gently up towards the ceiling. And then once you've kissed the sky 10 times, if you feel ready, gently release your chin and then just bow your head to your heart, close your eyes down. Take a nice generous inhale, breathing in love and gratitude for yourself, for your mind, for your body and for all of your hard work. Take another nice generous breath and allow a little bit of tension to build up in the shoulders, maybe even scrunch up your face. And then as you exhale, let your shoulders soften, relax your jaw and think about letting go of anything you're holding onto that won't serve you through the rest of your night. And when you feel ready, gently lift up through the top of your head, gently open your eyes. I bow to you. Happy Monday. You guys are amazing.